Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And today we have the Nikka 12 year old on the cask. A Japanese whiskey from the Nikka company that belongs to Asai, which is a really big beer company. And they have just acquired them. I think it's now already five or six years ago that they acquired Nikka. And Nikka was already a big company and now Asai with Nikka is, yeah, one of the big three of Japan. There's three big companies that dominate the Japanese, I would say drinks market because their main thing is beer and uh, whiskey and water. Whiskey is just a, a side product. A lot of people in, in Japan have a drink, yeah, water. Or at least that's what I expect because I've driven through Japan and Japan has that having or that habit of having a vending machine of bottled water like everywhere. It's not a Coke vending machine with Coca-Cola, but it's always Suturi Asai. Yeah, and sometimes kidding. And they're everywhere. There's a mountain pass, there's just a little watchtower in wood and below that is a vending machine however they get the energy there to to run this vending machine but there's a vending machine you can get a bottle of water there so you never run out of water in japan even if you're at the very 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 far side anywhere okay so um drifting off topic the nika 12 year old is uh one of the yeah prestige blended molds from nika so it's a say premium blended whiskey means it comes from it can come from different distilleries and they do have two distilleries one Miyagikyo which is the big one with a grain distillery and malt distillery in pot stills with very very large stills and then we have the one in the north in on the north isle of Hokkaido and that is the Yoichi brand or the Yoichi uh, distillery and um, the Nika is a mixture of that bit of background for Japan. Japanese uh, whiskey making is very, very focused on blending. So they want to make the perfect balanced blend. So what I expect is to get a, a very balanced whiskey that has a bit of everything and is really yeah, pleasant to drink with a lot of experience of nuances in here. What we do know is it's 70% malt, 30% grain. So there must be at least something from Miyagikyo in here. And yeah, I think I've babbled on a bit. Oh, I can show you the bottle. The bottle is a bit, bit nice here. Yeah, it's hard to show you the bottle. And I think my my focus has shifted a little bit backwards because my camera came a little bit towards us so here is the focus oh, is it here here's the focus and this is not drawn on this is a, a second layer of uh of of paper which is glued on to the bottom so you can see yeah there is a second layer around that it's just yeah a wrapping around the gift box looks quite cool and uh, it's a nice bottle. The, the glass bottle has a little bit of a, a step here and the cork is uh, the cap. Let's say the cap is enormous, enormously big. Yeah. Enormously big. But it's if it is enormously big, it's still not too big to 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 hold it. So it's it's really nice. It, it works pretty well. And the the bottle on top is uh, especially well made because there is a a little bit of a, a funnel thing going on, a little bit of a cone at the top, so you can really find your way into the bottle easily. This bottle is the, one of the bottles that's. It looks tight, but it opens very easily and closes very easily because you have a huge knob to grab it and exert a lot of force. And that force is directed in the right direction with the cone. So very well made, but it looks expensive. <laughs> okay, it's uh, 
it's a balanced one. It doesn't have a, a huge kicker that gives you in one direction. I would say it's a little bit uh, sweet, a little bit of floral, malty, but there are distinct oaky notes with a little bit of a cacao theme going on, a little bit of a dark chocolate theme going on. So I would have expected it for, for Nika, which are said to be light, fruity distillery character. Um, I would have expected more of a light whiskey. This is more heavy than, than I expected with more oak and more spiciness, but it's a, a hard to define spiciness. It's like baking spices, like, I don't know. Or do you actually use nutmeg and ba baking? Nutmeg, like piment, cloves maybe, but just a smidge of it. Not a, a sharp, hot spiciness like, like pepper, but more of a, a dark, deep, deep one combined with yolk, like an oak spiciness. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm, the flavor has a bit of a direction. I would have expected it very, very, very balanced, going in all directions. The, the flavor is more oaky, um, bittersweet, there is a bit of a bitterness going on. So it's a, a heavy, I don't want to say malt blend, but it does have the nuances. You can find a little bit of a floral note, you can find a little bit of a, uh, a fruity note with a little bit of apples and pears. The fruity note is, is manageable to distinguish really fairly easy. It's not strong, but you can find it the floral note takes a bit of imagination, a bit of concentration. Mm. Now that you have it, you know, I have it in my mouth, it smells a bit different as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah, pretty heavy for what I expected. I have to say, I do this um, not early morning, but uh, in the morning. I do my videos now here our full scheduled day so i'm doing my video tasting in the morning and um in the morning i tend to have more of a the flavors that strong flavors the oak the spiciness are a bit more intense and a bit more present in my mouth so if you'd have it in the, in the evening maybe after a, a meal that maybe has some spices in it then this might in comparison be different the experience of enjoying a whiskey is very much dependent on a day, very much dependent on the company and very much dependent on what you ate or did before. And so maybe I'm a bit too harsh with all the bitterness and the strong tones in the whiskey. Maybe it's a bit lighter when you have a different uh, yeah, preset to the tasting. And uh, yeah, let me tell you the taste. I. I expected much, much lighter whiskey, but here they even say dark chocolate provides the backbone of the mouth watering bitterness. Yes, it does. And yes, it is a bit of a bitterness in there. And on, uh, on one end, the malted barley extends to earthier notes. Yes, also strong notes, earthier notes. Mm, okay. You could interpret them that way. I didn't, but you can. While on the other, the fresh fruits, apple, prunes, mirabelles, and green edge plums, pears are reminiscent of plentiful harvest. So, mm, a little bit of a for me there. I didn't have that much of a plentiful harvest going on in that whiskey. With air, honeyed, and floral notes, lilac and lily of the valley make their appearance. Yes, in a faint way. It's just a little, a little note in there. Okay. That was it. That was my take to the Nika 12 years old. Um, one other thing to say about that whiskey is it's fairly expensive. It's fairly expensive. You have to have a deep pocket and a uh, huge interest to afford a bottle of that because it's, yeah, let's say a few bucks beyond a hundred, like 120 euros, maybe 130 uh, dollars, depending on where you find it. 
yeah, that was it. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.